Okay, so we've got my poster. I have flattened my poster, and then I've saved it with a new name, Test Carl Assignment 8 Color Poster, so that I can play with something called color separations on it. So I go to Actions under Window, and I'm going to find, because I've loaded these from the class Actions, the Carl Color Separation folder. Now, Actions are programs within Photoshop. And it's, I'm old enough that I grew up with VHS cassette tapes, you know, for movies. And you had like the rewinders and the whole thing. And what you learned as a kid is you never opened up the tape and actually pulled on the magnetic tape, right? That ruined the movie, like an old uh, music cassette too. You'd have to wind it back and try to, and it would always mess it up. So I think of these folders within Actions as shelves on a media bookshelf because each of these folders contains multiple movies. And within each of these movies, this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to open them up and then start playing with the tape because what's in there is every programmed move that's embedded into this. But what you do want to do is first find the shelf you want to play. And the shelf I want to play is Carl Color Separations. So let's look on that shelf. And then the options on that shelf. Do I want to just separate out the, the cyan? Do I want to just separate out the yellow? Do I want to just separate out the magenta? Do I just want to separate out the black? Or do I want to do all of them all at once? Well, for now, let's do what I did last in the last video and just separate out the yellow. So I select it. And that's like choosing that video and pulling it off of the, the media bookshelf. And then I put it into my VCR and I hit play. And because my whenever I create an action, I always make it a safe action, which means I don't overwrite the existing file. Instead, I create a new file that does what I asked it to do. Right? So here I have it. I have a yellow color separation file based on the flattened file that I started with. Okay. That makes sense. Now I'm going to try running all of them. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. I'm going to select that tape and I'm going to play it. And remember, you can download these actions and you can do this on your flattened image to start playing with it. And so, because it's CMYK, this is going to open up actually five new files. It's going to open up a cyan one, a yellow one, a magenta one, a black one, and then a combined one. And there's actually nothing artistic about it. It's just a sequence of commands within Photoshop. And I want you to understand that this is how printing happens, you know, with the separation of these inks. And whenever your inkjet printer takes a, an image from your screen, that image, that full color image is made of red, green, and blue lights, but your printer has to change it into cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink on white paper, right? So I'm gonna take all the individual layers that are created, those files, close them, Turn them off so that I only have two files remaining. I have my original, just so I can compare them, right? And I have my CMYK combined dot layer file. Now, the reason that the black is off is because it's centered. So what I'm going to do is now play with the what's called the offset, right, of these dots. And I'm going to select the black layer because it's clearly not lined up with the rest. And I'm going to use my arrow keys with the move tool to nudge it into the right place. But the charm of, of old printing is sometimes you want it not to be perfectly clean. You want it to be slightly off because it just looks more cool. Right? Think of the inspiration posters that we were looking at. So this is dead on where all of those 
all it's made of is these four inks on white paper. And those inks are slightly different opacities, right? So that they layer on top of each other in a way similar to printer inks to create the image, right? So this is different than this in a ton of ways. It doesn't have the, the color range, the value range. But I'm not saying that now this is something I like. What I'm saying is this gives me new tools to play with. And it has an authenticity to it because it comes from the history of printing. So what do I do now with this? I make a folder and I group those four layers into one folder, right? And I label that folder CMYK. Then I can move that folder onto another file like this flattened poster, right, as a test. Now notice my professional actions are made for professional work, which is 300 pixels per inch. So as part of my action, it changed the resolution from 350 to 300, right? My original file is 350. So that's why the sizes are different. But I can take that folder now, I actually like that because it will slightly soften the sharp edged dots <laughs> and make it more like a printer prints because it actually is a little soft at the edges of the dots as the dots absorb into the paper. So this is imitating full printing, but it requires that I grow my whole folder to match and again kind of line it up with my existing work. Okay, so now you can see the dots overlaid on top and just offset a little bit to the lower right of my original di digital illustration. The beauty is I can play with them. I can turn off the cyan or I can take turn off the magenta or I can take the magenta from being 66, and I say that's a little too much red. Let's take the opacity down on the magenta. And I can similarly take the opacity up on the yellow if I want to, or down to just the right level, or get rid of it completely. Right. And then with the black, which is at 80%, I can decide, oh, I want that a little bit stronger. And then as a whole folder, which contains the cyan, the magenta, the yellow, I mean, I just love the look of this, right? It's so much more interesting to me than this. But that's just me, right? But maybe it's a little too, too heavy. So I can take the whole folder and I can just take its opacity down a little bit. And that way I can really get kind of the best of both worlds. And you see that offset is there. And if I didn't want that, I can just nudge the whole folder and set it right on top. And maybe for this image, that's a better choice. Right. But I especially like what it does to this area makes that a little bit more satisfying than this to me. And I know it makes the wood grain more satisfying to me and the edge more satisfying. But again, this is a personal taste, right? So this is something I find helpful. And your personal tastes are based on kind of what you grew up on and, and what positive associations you have. So this makes me think of kind of the old printing that I love. So I like this poster better. It integrates the, the color separations. And I like what it did to the type too. You know, and it just kind of makes everything work together. 
So then I might say, okay, well, that's good. That's done. The problem is this file is very limited. It's either this or this, and then I have the versions within this. So I'm going to save it as my test Carl assignment color eight, but then I want to go back to the file before I saved it, right? Where I still had all the options for the type being on top or the type being behind or the, um, you know, the, the background being vignetted or being uh, gradated or not, right? I have all these options now. The beauty is, just like I did before, I can take the CMYK folder from this file and drag and drop it onto this file. So this is where I have it. I'm going to pull this out and then drag and drop this on. And there you see the folder. I'm going to put it up on top of everything for now. Right? It's only set it at 63%, right? But then I'm going to layer it on top and zoom in so I can line it up correctly. So these are finishing techniques. If I want the best possible poster I can get. So that's offset a little bit off on the bottom. Yeah, I'll just try just lining it up really clean. All right. And now I'm saying, oh, that looks great, but I lose a little bit of that kind of contrast. So what if I sync it below? Or what if I um, duplicate it, Command J, duplicate it, turn that one off, and then merge this CMYK layer, and then go to Image and say Auto Tone. So it gives me that brightness again, kind of balances the histogram, right? And then what if I set that, instead of being normal mode, to pin light? See, now I've got the dots, but I still have the contrast. Whereas with normal mode, it kind of rids the contrast from it. So pin light's a great way to get the texture to come through, but not affect the lights and darks as much. Yeah, so I like that better. So you just keep improving, right? And keep playing. Now I'm almost done. I might turn this on at a very low percentage. Because I don't mind that it dulls it a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to save that. This is now a master file that has CMYK color separation. But realize, because I brought it into this layered Photoshop file, I have other options. Right now, it's CMYK over everything. But as I move it down, I can move those dots down below as well. So I'm going to move that whole grouping down below my type. Right, And you can see how now the CMYK dots are not affecting the type, but they affect everything below it. Computer's having trouble keeping up with previewing what I'm showing. OK, so you see all the, the dots. If I take these files and I move them down, I'm just using command left bracket, underneath the type, watch the type, that gives me a new option, right? 
and I can move them similarly down below the spot illustration. 